YouTube trying to get some video done and uh, kind of got the house to myself today which is unusual I want to get some things done before before I uh, it gets too hot to be out here doing anything and um, I wanted to talk briefly about um, edge design uh, or I've talked about edge design I want to talk about uh, the the flat grind in general the the, the actual a geometry of a flat grind. Okay, now you've got full flats and you've got uh, saber grinds, which is just a, a a flat grind that's up part of the way of the blade. It could be three quarters or it could be closer to the top. It, does, it just depends on what you want. And I've already covered all of that, but there's one thing that I do want to talk about real quick, and that is the profile of it, the angle of it, if you will. Now I don't, I, I do everything by eye. Everything I do is by eye. I don't, I very seldom will you see me measuring anything. Um, even when I do grinds, it's all hand. I don't use jigs or anything else. I do it all by hand and by eye. But there's one thing that you need to, to pay attention to when you're purchasing a knife, even though it says it's a full flat or if it's, it, it, they says it's a, a saber grind. And you want to pay attention to how thin is this edge right at the cutting surface, at the secondary bevel. Now, as a rule of thumb, as a rule of thumb, the thinner the blade, the better it will cut. Okay? But there's a trade-off. The thinner the blade, the easier it'll break. Okay? So, you have to ask yourself, what is most important to me? Cutting ability or strength? Um, if you're just going to use it as a skinning tool, as a cutting tool, do fine feather sticks and you're not going to be beating on the knife and, and doing things that in, in my opinion is just totally nonsense, but hey, if you do that, that's your thing, that's, that's okay. That's, that's, that's what makes the world go around is different philosophies and different opinions, <laughs> okay? So you need to ask yourself if that's what you're going to use the knife for then you want as much metal as you can at the at the edge. But be in, keep in mind, it will not cut as well as a thin blade. Okay? So my knives, my personal knives, this is a, just to kind of give you an idea, this is a 5 30 seconds knife. I have a very high um, saber grind on this knife. And the reason for that, this is my camp, camp knife, my butcher knife, my belt knife for hunting season. Okay? And the reason I designed this knife the way I did was I wanted a, a thin cutting edge that didn't have any drag. But yet I wanted a little bit of strength because I plan on using this knife for camp chores. And I, I might be using batoning this for small stuff. Now, not, not four inch logs with it, but we're talking small stuff for kindling, okay? And I wanted some strength there. That's the reason I left, uh, I left the meat about halfway up on this, on, on the spine, okay? But the edge of it is very, very thin. It, 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 will, it will process meat and kitchen chores very well. Now most of the knives that I see on the market today, if it says a full flat, it is a full flat, but right at the apex, they left a lot of steel right there because they're concerned about you breaking their knife. I'm going to be honest with you. But that knife is not going to cut very well because it's almost, it's almost like a scandy grind because there's so much steel left on that edge. So when you're choosing a knife, look at that edge profile. Turn the blade up and just run your eye down it. How thin is that blade? Are you going to use this primarily as a cutter? Are you going to use this as a baton knife? That's what you, you need to look at on the edge. How thick is it? hope all this is making sense. Uh, just remember, the thinner the blade, the better it cuts. The thicker the blade, the better it's going to hold up to some abuse. But 
it won't cut as well. Okay? So you gotta have a trade-off. And that's what drives us knife makers just completely batty. <laughs> it's trying to, to achieve the best cutting ability and yet leave the strength there. That's the reason a lot of us go to different the different types of metals, the the um, um, the crucible steels like the S90V and all this other stuff. And they're hard steels, but another thing to think about, if the steel is hard, that means it's going to be harder to sharpen. You're going to have to use diamond rods and diamond stones to sharpen it. So, other people are going to come back, oh, that's easy, it's a piece of cake. Well, maybe it is to you, but the primarily it's going to be harder to sharpen than just a standard, high carbon, uh, everyday, tried and true steel that will hold an edge very well and easy to sharpen. That's the reason I, I stay with 1095 or 01 because to me that is the best steel that you can get in a knife. There are some drawbacks. You got to wash the blade. You got to keep it clean. You got to keep it uh, some type of protectant on it. But other than that, people have been using them for centuries and didn't have a problem with them. They took care of them. They took care of their blades. And that's the reason they was able to use them. So, that's enough of me rambling. I hope, I hope this made sense. Uh, talking about the geometry of a flat grind. And what to look for. Um, it just depends on, on how you want to use the knife. If you, if you want to use it... Um, if you want strength there, then do a saber grind with a little bit of meat on the edge. If you want to use this as a, as a skinning knife and just cutting cutting meat and kitchen chores, then you want a thin edge that's going to slice through things without dragging. Okay? So, some things to consider. And then, until the next one, you guys be safe. And uh, take plenty of band-aids and, and lots and lots of knives. We'll catch you soon. Bye.